We're about to compute the square root, uh, and there's gonna be two square roots of the number negative one minus i. And we're supposed to first give them an r e to the i theta form, and with the smallest, smaller angle first. And I have the nth roots of a complex number formula here. So first thing we need to do is get the theta and the r. We're gonna take the, so for us, we're taking the second root, the square root, so our n will equal two and we're gonna get the square root of the radius. And then for the angle, we're gonna divide the angle by two. And then we're also gonna add this extra piece right here. So let's go ahead and write this out for when n equals two. We have, well, I'm not even gonna write the uh, second root, but square root of r, cis, cosine i sine, theta over two plus, 2 pi over 2, k for k equals 0 and 1. Okay, so there'll be two of these, and what will be square root r, cosine i sine pi over 2, and the other one is, again, square root r, cosine i sine, of, now it's pi over two, this first one is pi over two plus zero. The next one will be pi over two plus pi, or plus two pi over two. So that'll be three pi over two when you add those together. Okay, so where did these fall on the unit circle? Um, oh, wow. These should all be thetas, not pi's. That was a big mistake. Should be a theta, theta, and then we don't know what theta is, so we can't do that last one. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out theta. That's really important. <clears throat> the radius is the easiest part. Maybe we'll do that first. The radius is square root x squared plus y squared. And here, x is negative one, y is also negative one. And sometimes you see this with an a and a b, but it's x plus i, y. And so the coefficient, uh, x is just the uh, constant without the i. Now, the y is the coefficient of i, which for this is negative one. So ready to compute the radius here. So it's square root one squared plus one squared. Now where do the negatives go? Well, you can write negative one squared, but when you square it, that negative's gonna disappear. So I never write the negatives when I know I'm about to square them. One squared is one, so we have one plus one, which is square root two. So this is r. Now if you look down, uh, down here at our formula, we need square root r. So square root of r, it looks like r r, Square root r is square root of square root two, or it's two to the one fourth power. And we're gonna to need to type in a decimal. Well, we don't need to, but we'll go over here and look at the decimal, 1.189. So I'll just copy this. And paste it in, oh, come on. All right, so that's the square root of the original radius, or it's, it's the new radius. So that's gonna be the r. Now we need to get theta, and let's get a little more room for that. So we know tangent theta is y over x. So our x and y are both negative one, and that reduces to one. And to find theta, use tangent inverse, but we have a slight problem here. If you remember back to the inverse trig functions, if you're in quadrant one or four, uh, that's the range of tangent inverse. Our point has both X and Y negative, so it's down here. So our point is in quadrant three, and we're gonna need to do is <clears throat> the tangent inverse is gonna give us the angle in quadrant one, and we have to add 
a half rotation to get the angle that we want. And we have to add half rotation, which is a pi. And again, you add the pi when you're in quadrant two or three, which happens when x is negative. You have to add a half rotation. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and compute tangent inverse of one. And somewhere, I believe this problem mentioned degrees. Give your angle in degrees, so we better make sure our calculator is in degree mode. So I'm using the uh, desmos.com slash scientific calculator right there. We're gonna use tangent inverse of just one. Uh, now I wrote down add a pi. Uh, inverse of one. We're in radian mode. Okay. So let's go ahead and recompute that. All right. So that's forty-five degrees right there. I'm going to go back. So we're in radians. Or not radian degrees, so we need to add a half rotation. So it's not a pi, it's 180 degrees. So we had 45 from what we just computed plus 180 is 225. Yes, 225. So that's our theta. And to be careful, this is the original theta. We're now going to take theta over 2. So we have to cut that in half, 225 over two. Oh boy. We'll use the decimal version, 112.5. So that's our theta over two. Now there's gonna be two versions of theta. There's regular theta over two. And now we have the second one. We are in degrees, so we better turn this into a degree. So it's square root r cosine i sine theta over two plus two pi over two is 180. All right, so we're gonna add over 2 plus 180 and that is a lot of degrees uh, let's see get the point 5 2 9 292.5 sounds right okay so that's our other angle 292.5 all right, so we're ready to write in some of these answers. So the first root, we've already got the radius here. So let's go ahead and write that in. 1.189, 1.189. We'll go to five decimal places, 207, or six decimal places. E to the I, now what is theta? The first theta we had, we need to use degrees, 112.5, 112.5. The second one was 292.5. Okay, you should have to make sure you're careful when you actually type these in. Uh, make sure using the exponent, you may need to put a multiplication in between there. Let's go ahead, uncover these answers. There we go. Second one. There we go. All right, so that gives you the first two. Now, how do we get the second two answers is back in rectangular form. The way you do that, you use the cosine I sine. So I'm only gonna do root one here, the first root. Let's get a little more. Here's the second version of this problem.
So on this one, we actually compute the uh, cosine i sine. And we had 2.5. All right, so what this actually is, well, first of all, we have that 1.189207, maybe. Yes. All right, now what is cosine i sine? That's cosine 112.5 plus I sine 112.5 equals, and you distribute this to each part here. And I'll bring the I out front. Okay, so let's go back to the calculator here. And I don't wanna type the numbers in wrong, so I will shrink that so we can see everything. Okay, 1.189207 times cosine, we're in degree mode, 112.5, close parentheses, there we go. There's our first plus. Now we're going to do the same thing with sine. Hopefully we can copy and paste this. All right. So I'm going to put the I in front. And then that, maybe I need a multiplication sign here. All right, so negative 0.455 and then positive 1.09. Let's go ahead and uncover that one. Uh, now, how do you get root two? Do the exact same thing we did, except you're gonna use the other angle right here. So you're gonna use 292.5, but otherwise exactly the same procedure.